Hello everybody and welcome to the start of a brand new season here in Formula Sim Racing for the 2015 Pro Series kicking off here in Albert Park in Melbourne. Just about to go out for Q1, the first qualifying session of the season and we're now racing for Zero Sim Racing, my brand new team and uh, hoping to make a good debut race for this team. Uh, my teammate Ricky wasn't able to attend there and already there's carnage uh, just leaving the pits so this is Q1 uh, if you're brand new to Formula Sim Racing the top 10 go into Q2 much like Formula 1 except well it's a bit like Q2 and Q3 in Formula 1 so the top 10 go through to Q2 and that is um, just one flying lap in Q2 Park Ferme um, you're allowed low fuel but You've pretty much got your race radiators, your brake ducts and all that kind of stuff. Uh, your race camera I think as well and all that kind of um, goodness. But uh, Q1 is free setup, um, unlimited number of laps. You can do as many as you want in the 10 minute session I believe. Yeah I believe it is 10 minutes. And um, just backing off a little bit in the field because we've got two guys We've got a big, bit of a train forming. Is that um, I think that's Dominic Foster? I think. I'm not entirely sure though. It's either Dominic Foster or James Early there, who uh, goes off in the early stages of Q1. Okay, now so we're coming to the end of a lap. I'd already set our time in this session, and uh, it was around 24:6, I believe. But we're now going for my second, well, my third and final lap here in Q2. Breaking at about 75 meters down to third gear briefly, up into fourth. Try not to take too much of the Astro Turf and run out too wide. DRS fully open down here. You want to break around 75 meters hit in between the two brake marker boards. Swing it down to second gear, bit slow through the apex, but um, good enough. We were allowed to extend that corner. Uh, it was mentioned in the race briefing, don't worry about that. Let's see the first sector time. It's a 28.8, which is meh pretty slow but we're now heading up towards one of the tricky corners I've always struggled with this middle sector breaking down into just second gear clip the apex taking a bit too much curve perhaps don't want to run it out too wide and tap that wall now into seventh gear at last down shifting into sixth just before the 50 meter board running over the curbs quite a bit may have extended that too much I'm not sure I believe you're allowed to extend but as long as you're not going past where the lines uh, re-emerge if that makes sense, which it probably doesn't down shifting through here, trying to keep the power down and that's probably where I made up the time I was a few thousandths off in every other sector apart from the final one and I did keep the power down through that corner final corner, rear end wants to step out let's see the final lap time, it's a 24.551 so that was, a, I think it was uh, one and a third tenth quicker, which is a good enough effort. Um, we're currently P15, but uh, we've got some other guys um, also on laps. And we ended up, I believe, in P17, uh, which is okay. It's not the end of the world. But um, let's go take a look at the back and the cars. Oh, we are starting P17, as I mentioned earlier. P17 as I mentioned earlier. So that's the the start starting this fucking end. I am with the end. I am with the fucking end. I am with the I am with this land. Keep his friend and with this land. Keep his land. Keep his friend and keep his friend and and um a pole is on pole once again. for Avid Chronic Racing. Another strong lineup for them this year. Heron Quakel uh nearly won the 2004 race. Second. Second. Four go speed. Also taking part in the World Championship later to that evening, so that he could do two races, he could do two races in one day at such high level, especially in World Championship. That's amazing. Two to the bar. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna attempt to pronounce that because I'll make a fool of myself. James Sadler, there's a name I can pronounce. Starts fourth. Uh, Chris Christoph Schroer, Schroer, I think P5. <laughs> Sander Kellis, P6. Larry, Larry, Algepius, Larry, Algepius, Wim Klopp, brother of Renz, 
high expectations, starting from ninth for Twister. David Cook, uh, I think he, believe, believe he made his debut in the Winter Series. I think it's his first um, Pro Series race. Uh, Renan Lopez for Origin Sim Racing. Uh, uh, of course, no longer is Cuba a pro. Uh, uh, Juan, San Juan. Juan Sanchez in P12. P13 is Andrea Ventura, also for Origin. P. Jean van Loggenberg, again with ACR. Chris Christian Bifumo. Oh, Andrea. No, 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 I'm not gonna. The other Andrea. No, 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 I'm not gonna. The other Andrea, basically. Uh, Will Barnes, me in 17th. Lionel Clute, P18, again. And before we start, something crazy happens here. Car suddenly slowing, and um, yeah, that's the end result. Pretty crazy stuff, if I'm brutally honest. And I think that was um, one of the new streamlined engineering cars. Dimitri Saharov is in the pit lane. Sergio Rodriguez. Have we got an issue? I think he got hit as well. David O'Reilly, P21. Ben Eastman, 22. James Early. Yeah, it was James Early, I think. And Andrew is starting with no rear wing, which is a bit weird. And Dominic has got no front wing, so uh, I think he, he did mention to me the night before that he's brand new to um, R Factor, R Factor and sim racing in general. So um, yeah, not a great start, but um, anyway. We're all hit. well, we're not all here. Some of us in the pits. The heart races. Lights out. Away we go, and it's a pretty meh launch for me, anyway. Nothing special. Going down the inside, have to be so careful because there's carnage already, and we get so close to actually making contact on the opening lap. We've got Eugene van Loggenberg in front of us. We have jumped up to P11. We have made up. Oh my gosh, we started P17. Another fantastic start. That's just like um, in Circuit of the Americas, where in 2014 I went from 16th to 11th, or was it 9th maybe at best, and then I got spun. And it was by flying Eugene van Loggenberg, so kind of fitting that I'm behind him. Uh, but let's take a look at that start again here. But I'm not here to um, look at whose fault it was, I'm not going to point the finger. So let's just watch and see how close it was. A bit higher up so you get a better perspective, uh, more of a TV perspective. But, and um, yeah, it was contact with, I think, was that Renan Lopez? Or um, might have been, I don't think it was the other Andrea because um, Andrea was racing me later on. I think that's him there. Or her. And it was Sanchez actually, I think he was the one Oh gosh, that's for Mad Cape. Um, oh, it looks like um, I know I said I wasn't going to point the finger. Uh, I think that's Renan Lopez. Is that Renan Lopez who goes into um, the back of the ACR car? And it is Renan Lopez. Okay, so a bit of wheel banging, and yeah, it just spirals out of control. Klopp was involved. And there's, yeah, Andrew with no rear wing. It's just really not nice to see. Especially as it's the first race of the season because um, you prepare so much in advance for this race. So it's really sad to see when um, guys go out so quickly. But we're in P11 right up there. And hunting down Eugene van Loggenberg. Now, actually, Eugene started on... I think he's... Is he on this plan? Oh no, sorry, he was on option tyres. Um, but from me onwards and back, I think everyone is on the primes who is still running in the race, that is. Or who doesn't retire from Right, now. so fast forward to lap two now in Albert Park. And we have got Andrea hot on our heels now. I believe he's on the prime. Yes, he is. For Eventer. And, um, yeah, so we're still running in P11. But, uh, Andrea is closing on harder tyres, so that was a bit of a wake-up call. Because, uh, Eugene was disappearing rapidly down the road. Obviously, anyone from 11th, well, 10th onwards is pretty damn good. P11 
apart from anyone else who got caught up in the first lap crash, but anyone who's ahead of me was bound to be fast. So I had to kind of really push to try and stay away from Andrea, who ended up beating me, I believe. Yeah, by quite some margin. Uh, yeah, so he was on the primes. I uh, had to try and break the DRS window because I was within a second just. Uh, he did a 28.655. I was slightly quicker, only by a few hundreds though, which you don't really want to. Okay, lap 13, we're starting to see the likes of other guys pit. Smoking car. Smoking, he had an incident or something. I can't remember from the broadcast, so I remember seeing it. I can't remember why now. Uh, so much going on in this race. Uh, ben Eastman is behind us in 11th. We're in P10, so we're doing a good job. Uh, and Klopp is quite some way down the road, as you would expect in Twister cars. But uh, Ben is gaining, so we kind of need to step it up. Speak button at this very moment. I was just like, right, I need to focus. And the moment I thought of um, Hiron, Quakel, or Ownage, um, in 2014, where he spun here, and I was just like, oh no, don't do a battle from 2010 either. Kept it on the road without spinning. My first major mistake, really. I think I had a couple of lockups. And so we got really, really, really slow exit. And not the best line through this final corner. Ben Eastman then. I'm not sure he had the DRS, or what he might have done, I think, yeah. I think he did, because he was. The detection zone was after that big mistake, and yeah, in fact, he does have DRS. So he'll have DRS for this straight here, in case you didn't know. DRS zones are uh, down the pit straight, and then down this long straight here, and you can see he gains so much under braking. Has a bit of a moment, actually, has to save it. And we're just trying to keep our cool. We've got um, Alari, um, a much quicker guy, and he's on the option tyres as well, so we need to watch out for him. I uh, hope we're not causing a trolley train, have a will train or a barns train. doesn't really have the same ring to it, but so be it. Because the cars behind us is slowly building up. Behind Alari, oh, it's Dimitri Zahar, oh, he's a bit further back. David O'Reilly doing a solid job in P13, don't know if he's stopped though yet. And you can already see that Alari is in Ben's mirrors, obviously racing for Netrex. And on those option tyres, you would expect him to be this much quicker as Ben runs very wide and Alari's going to try and pass him down the inside maybe here. Oh, that's a very bold move actually. Didn't expect him to go from that far back, but uh, obviously Alari's one of the top drivers in this division, in this pro series. And here he is, and already we can see him in our rear mirrors. Now at this point I was looking at the timing thing just trying to work out what tyres Alari was because I was quite surprised to see a guy as quick as him behind me so I knew something had probably happened and um, I think Alari already has DRS well he's got the option so he's going to be quick out of here regardless and as I say that Andrea comes out the pits but um, Alari lobs it down the inside great move but um, the issue with that was that I was trying to chase um, Andrea and um, I know Andrea was a lot quicker, but I was hoping to try and capitalise on him being on cold tyres. Uh, obviously not, because my only chance was in the first couple of corners, being on warmer used tyres. Fast forward to lap 22, and now we've got someone else in our mirrors. We've got Andrea Ventura in the Origin car. I'm looking to pass us. Also on the Prime tyres, did a 29-0 on my lap. As Andrea does a 27.4, not I imagine Andrea or someone else pitted and they're on fresher rubber at all actually. Um, sector 2 very evenly matched, I'm actually a tenth quicker than Andrea Ventura, I believe it is, yes it is. Uh, Ventura, I believe is on newer tyres. I cannot, I'm pretty sure Ventura is on newer tyres, seeing as I'm now P8, I've just skipped quite a bit so I'm not entirely sure. Got a bit anxious at this point as there was quite a bit of cloud cover over the circuit and track temperatures obviously I think went down. But I was more worried about rain because I knew rain wasn't meant to be in the race and I knew they said it was going to be a dry race but um, I heard about some issues with the weather plug-in 
uh, that takes, I think, real weather data or something, I'm not sure. I assume that's what the plugin was. But um, I got a bit anxious because I worried, uh-oh, is this going to be another server issue? And are we going to have rain when we're not meant to? Wouldn't have minded it if it was right near the end, but um, yeah, I got a bit worried about that, especially with Andrea and Juan Sanchez is on the option tyres, but a long way back. 30.1 this lap, you can see my rear tyres are really starting to go, but my front left is the one to watch because so many right hand turns on this track, obviously, being a clockwise circuit. And you can see in my mirrors actually quite clearly on this replay, thankfully, that uh, Andrea is getting closer. You can see my steering movements are getting a bit weird. My lines are pretty bad at this point. And you can see just under traction and under the turn in, getting on the power much earlier than me. And now Andrea snapping on the heels of this Zero Sim racing car. Going through this tricky middle sector, I don't... Oh, David Cook, uh, this wasn't for position, by the way. This actually got shown on the broadcast because uh, David Cook eventually unlaps himself, which I thought was perfectly reasonable. Uh, my tyres are really old now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, yeah, at this point, it's right before my stop, and you can see that Andrea's tyres are in much better shape, so that's why I'm struggling for traction. Um, I don't know what tyre... Was um, David Cook on the option? Yes, he is. So David Cook is on 1.5 to 2 seconds quicker tyres, and I had a big mistake going through their nice lock-up, which gave David Cook a bit of a look but now Andre you can see that rear wing flap wide open heading down the straight I did not want to just ruin a good race and I knew Andre was on quicker tyres just had to let him go there and then I see David Cook and he's also going to have the DRS because he was within a second of Andrea come the detection point and this is what got shown up in the broadcast because um, uh, David Cook was indeed a lap down at this point, but uh, my tyres were so bad I was going to pit I think that lap or the next. So I kind of just lifted through there because I could see a crash coming. I had visions of an accident there before the race, so did not want to ruin what I've been already good. Still P9. Um, my best position in FSR was P15 at this very track, but um, in those days I was like a few seconds off anyone. Um, now I'm a few seconds off World Championship or Ace Drivers, so a lot better than being a few seconds off last place in Pro, and now I actually practiced. But uh, yeah, getting ready to then make our final pit stop, two stop race of course. Um, laps, we've got 35 laps of racing, forgot to mention that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Our previous lap was a 132, but this is a 131.3 as we let the race leader, Ron Quake, will buy. Um, there was a big gap to P10, which was Juan Sanchez. So I thought, why not lift a little bit? I've still got 20 or 19 seconds. My team were telling me to box a lap early on lap 25, and I thought, why not extend this stint? Because I didn't want to be on really worn-out option tyres at the very end of the race, because I, those go off remarkably quickly. Whereas these were in as better shape as I've ever seen them. So I thought I might as well um, look after them. Had a bit of a scare with the fuel at one point. Because I was kind of matching um, the race distance with my fuel. Box next lap. Okay, well, box, box, box. Okay then, in for our final stop. And um, pushing it a little bit more. Still wanted to be conservative coming into the pits. Going to the option tyres. Hopefully we don't lose any more spots. I think P10 is Juan Sanchez. And they're coming around the final corner now. It's going to be tight. Really tight, actually. And are we going to hold on to P9 in this Pro Series race? As I came out, I could hear a car. In my mirrors, you could just see that red dot, which is the Mad Cape car, with Juan Sanchez. And um, we turn our attention back to this fight. Juan obviously got the opportunity to warm up his tyres. I did not, having uh, just switched, so my tyres were pretty cold. And I had to really push now and eke out the gap because I didn't realise it was the one I was practising with uh, the, the night before. I saw Juan in the server and I was I a bit quicker on one that pace by some tenths or something like half a second maybe. 
didn't realise that at the time and I was pretty worried that I was going to lose P9. Target going into the race was to finish P12 so to be in that position was pretty nice but didn't, I wanted to battle people, just didn't want it to end in tears after such a great race. Already a bit lazy on my lines, not really looking as sharp as I have been. Mainly just looking in the mirrors, talking to our uh, engineer, just trying to work up the tyres a little bit. Not really using as much of the track as I normally would. But um, really dark skies got me a bit worried at this point. And uh, Andrea... Oh, not Andrea. One will have the DRS as we come over the line. Not long to go now. Going down into turn one. And look how much he closes under braking with that around 20 kph extra boost on the straight. Now the second DRS only runs it a bit wide. I was getting a bit worried if he was going to just dive bomb into turn three. But luckily, um, I think him running wide cost him a little bit. Pushing out to turn four, extending as much as you think you can get away with without losing time. And uh, let's look at the first sector, 29.9, which is not quick at all. And uh, if we look at Juan's first sector, I imagine it's quicker easily. Oh no, 30.1. Not my quickest sector. 23.6 middle sector and Juan 23.2. It is on. This is my weakest sector by far. One and three are uh, reasonable one probably being okay in this division anyway and here we go going through this quick chicane love this section probably my favorite complex on the track at least on the rear wing camera again and it is so close to the finish now giving on wheels tv kind of jazz buzzy web f1 central some well deserved publicity and um Inside sim racing as well. Also on the rear of the car, you can't see them so much now. But there the crowds are. are kind of cleared now in Melbourne. And we're just about to start our final lap of this race. As Juan Sanchez goes really deep into the final corner, he may have just messed up his one and only opportunity to pass me. Don't know if he'll... I think he did get the DRS because he was within a second at the detection point, which is just before those brake marker boards. So that probably gave him a bit of hope. Oh, a bit of a mischief there. We ride down turn to turn three for one last time because we are a lap down. If you remember correctly, we let through her own Quakel. But uh, Juan Sanchez all over the back of us. Well, not really anymore. Uh, we are pretty much safe, so let's go to the cockpit. It's been using a lot of the rear wing camera, so sorry for that. Um, probably want to see more of my Illuminati gloves and uh, snazzy race suit. I did design all the uh, skins for this by the way. Pretty pleased with them. And a bit of a twitch. Nearly did a Bottas. I did actually hit that wall earlier in the race so my left, no my right rear, sorry, suspension took a bit of a knock but uh, wasn't anything substantial. I opted not to repair it during the pit stops uh, just to save time because you never know, it could randomly say that it's a 60 second pit stop and um, it didn't affect me too much but uh, coming to the line in a moment now what's it gonna be? Juan Sanchez will have the DRS for one final time but he's in my opinion nowhere near close enough even with that DRS advantage we're weaving all our way to our best finish it's P9 in Zero Sim Racing's first Formula Sim Racing event and I was really happy with that, obviously. So then, uh, let's take a look at the finishing order. Jerome Quakel winning, uh, making up for the defeat in 2014 here on the final lap. Sander Carlos P2 and Schroer run out of fuel on the final lap to the finish line. Horrible DNF kind of for him. Larry P4 just shows that there was no point fighting him because he was so much quicker. James Sadler a bit disappointed in P5, Christian Bifumo I think his name is, I'm not going to bother pronouncing, Andrea who we fought earlier uh, again sh proves that it was worth letting him through in the end, he's much quicker, Andrea Ventura, the two Andreas together and then it's us and it's time to do some, oh yeah there was some failed donuts but uh, well deserved. 
P9 in our first race, and that puts us in P9 of the championship. 